Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of our EAFC 24 Summer Career Mode here with Crystal Palace and we're kicking off Season 3 today with our Eagles as we see we have a whole host of players returning to the club from loan spells. I'm sure we're going to have a whole host more go out this season but you can see our sort of round up here second in the Premier League. FA Cup, we made it to the quarterfinals, same as the Carabao Cup, but we did manage to win the UEFA Europa League in the previous episode with that absolute thriller against Real Madrid. So I'm sure the board will say they're happy with us. Yes, they are. Let's, let's dive straight into this and see what our budget's going to be for Season 3. So here we are then as we load up into season two. What I'm actually going to do, because I think we've got maybe one or two, two deals to go through, is just sim through to the second of the month. And those of you who are eagle-eyed, eagle-eyed, may have just seen the budget as we, as we swiped across it there. 140 million for the new season. I don't think we're even going to need that much with the, uh, the players that I'm looking at bringing in. So we have 30 left over at the end of last campaign. I don't think we're going to spend 140 million this campaign. But we have seen a few departures. Jeffrey Schlupp's gone to Southampton on a free, and two of the youngsters, Darren Daly and Arthur Paul, have gone out on loan. Speaking of Southampton, let's see who came up from the second tier as, of course, we know that Nottingham Forest and Luton came up automatically. Who else came up with them? It was Southampton, so I quite like that. Jeff Schlupp staying in the Premier League, heading down to the South Coast to play for the Saints. All right, so I think my first port of call is to go through the squad, work out who I'm actually going to keep. I don't think there's going to be anyone that I'm really actively looking to sell. Will Hughes could potentially leave. Um, of course, Czech Decore still got that injury and he has only got a, a year left on his deal. Wharton is still technically down as well. Uh, Boateng will add to the transfer list as he's, he's just never going to play. And with Ahamada as well, I'm, I'm not too sure. He's only got a year left on his contract. He's now 23 years of age. We've kind of surpassed him with the players that we've got. I'm going to just add him to the transfer list. We could loan him out for another year or so, but there's not really much point in keeping him if he's never going to play. So Ahamada, I think, will look to get out. Again, Matthias Franza, I'm not really sure what to do with him. He's grown quite nicely after that little loan spell that he had. Zach Hurst is also back and looks pretty decent. So I, I don't really know what to do. We have got a lot of attacking players. Um, Malcolm, uh, transfer list or loan list? Let's, let's send him out on loan again. Um, Ian Mackay will also go out on loan, but I think that is probably going to be it. We've not got a huge amount of players that we're actively looking to sell. It's probably only five or six. And most of those will be loans. It's actually only five with two permanent transfers. So I do think what I'm going to do is offer a couple of contracts out because I know we've got quite a few players with just a year left at the club. If we take a look at the squad hub, I definitely think a couple of contracts are needed for our key players. And I think I'm going to start with the captain, Mark Gurhey as well, giving him a four-year extension and uh, boosting his wages up to 60 grand a week, which is over double what he's on now. But he is our captain. We want to keep him here. That will make him one of, if not the, yeah, the highest earner at the club as we kind of stuck to our wage bill. But Mark Gurr, he's our captain. And I, I think there's absolutely no harm in offering a salary of 60 grand a week for the quality that he is at. And I think I'm also going to reward Jefferson Lerma with a new deal as well. Two-year extension that will take him until he's 33 and a, a little wage boost as well because he was so important for us towards the end of the season. Up to 45 grand a week makes him our joint second highest earner with Daichi Kamada. As for the rest of the guys with their contracts up, Froiler will probably go on a free. Is he retiring? No, he's not. So Froiler will probably leave on a free at the end of the season. Ahamada we're looking to actively sell now. 
As for Decore and Mateta, well, Decore's still down injured, so I'm not really too sure what to do with him. And as for Mateta, I'm going to wait and see what happens in the window. If no bids come in by the beginning of September, then we will sit down with him and, uh, and look to offer him a new deal. I think if we were thinking about this realistically, with the two past seasons that he's had, only a year left on his deal, he'd probably be looking for a move to a bigger club. And as we're looking to do things realistically, I'm going to hold fire on the new contract for now because it's so easy to negotiate on this game it doesn't really make any difference how good the player's been or or whatnot in real life he would probably want to go but in in the save he'd just happily sign a new contract um finally i am going to offer a new contract to adam wharton as i do think one of our key players i want to keep him here at the club and he's still on quite a low wage considering he's grown quite significantly over the last couple of years so just a one year extension on what is already a four year contract and I'm actually gonna bump his wages up to 45 grand a week as well and uh, and match Daichi Kamada and Jefferson Lerma because I think Adam Wharton is one of the key players at the club. So just looking at the team here and obviously how we've got things set up, we've lost quite a few players from last year, probably a good four or five. We're looking a bit short in defense especially in the sort of wide wing back positions we've got milan um on the right hand side but we've never really had a backup to Tarek mitchell again at center back we've got richards we've got mengi but other than that we've not really got any cover we've got players who can fill in there the no naturals and quite a few of these guys in the resis are going to be sold or loaned out so we are going to have to bring some players in for the squad i'd say we're quite stacked going forward with zach hurst and france are coming back whitaker we've got hadji wright kamada zaha and um, the, the other sort of thing that I'd, I'd quite like to do is bring in, like, now that we're playing in the Champions League, someone that's got experience playing in the competition. Because I think if you look to this team, other than maybe Froiler, maybe Kamada, we've not got many players who have many appearances in the Champions League. So I've just been scouting the free agents pool to see if there's any players that I can find who are a little bit more experienced and have played in the competition. So these are the players that I found. We've got Nelson Semedo, who of course I don't think has played in the Champions League. Maybe, correct me if I'm wrong. Although we do already have two right backs at the club. We've got Sergio Reguilon, uh, Eric Dyer, and Victor Lindelof both as uh, centre-backs who have played in the Premier League, Danilo Pereira, uh, Jorginho and Ruben Vargas. But the man that I really want to get is Jorginho. Now, he's one of those players, I think you either love him or you hate him. He, he's, he always wants to get on the ball. He wants to try and make things happen. And he does have a lot of experience playing at the top level and in the Champions League. And I think for a team like us playing our first season in the Champions League, it would be great to have someone like Jorginho joining up with the team. So I don't want to break the wage structure too much, but I am going to see if I can bring the former Napoli, Chelsea and Arsenal man in as an experienced head heading into the Champions League. Of course, we've already got Froiler as kind of the um, like the experienced head, especially in that midfield. But I do like the idea of bringing Jorginho in, and he's quite happy to take a wage of fifty grand. So it doesn't break the uh, the wage structure, I wouldn't say. And Jorginho on a free, I think that's a really really good pickup from Crystal Palace. So Jorginho is in, it's a two year deal on 50 grand a week, but I do really like the idea of bringing him in. He, he's a really experienced player. He's probably gonna start decreasing pretty rapidly, but he's probably only gonna play in the Champions League and the sort of player that you bring off the bench to see out a game. We've got quite a lot of options in there. I do think that Will Hughes is probably quite likely to be sold in this summer window. 
and potentially Ozo going out on loan. But with Decore still down for the first half of the season, I do think bringing in Jorginho is a great bit of business on a free transfer. Right, I think what I'm going to do is start simming through and uh, see what kind of bids we get. Hopefully the players that are transfer listed and loan listed we can get out pretty quickly. There is a loan bid here. For, uh, for Mengi from PSG, but I'm going to turn that down. Makes absolutely zero sense, that deal. Um, strangest first bid I've ever had in a uh, in a transfer window. But yeah, just going to start. There we go. Trying to get these guys out on loan and try and get rid of the dead wood that we've got transfer listed. Well, a few more bids here. I'm not even going to negotiate that one. I'm just going to accept for Boateng. Also a loan bid for Shane Maxwell. Galatasaray, I quite like that one. Sending the Scottish lads abroad to bulk up a bit. As Ian Mackay looks like he could be heading on his way to Stuttgart. Now Ajax wanting Ahamada. I quite like that one as he spent some time out in uh, in the Netherlands at PSV. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can get a little bit more money for him from Ajax. A couple of big bids coming in here. Uh, Ahamada, another bid from Braga. They've matched the bid from Ajax, so I will accept that. Uh, bid for Jefferson Lerma from Celta Vigo, but he has just signed a new deal literally a week ago. So he's going to be staying. And a bid from Augsburg for odds on Edward. I wouldn't stand in his way if a, uh, if a real big side came in. But I don't really see him jumping ship after the two years that he's had to go and join Augsburg. Well, we're seeing our first departure here. And I think it's one of the Scottish lads going out on loan. It is Ian Mackay heading to Stuttgart in Germany for two years. I quite like that one on loan. Oh, and also Boateng heading to Demispor in Turkey. So good to get him off the books. So we've got another deal going through here. That is Ahamada heading off to Braga. You know, I have a bit of a bit of a soft spot spot for SC Braga. So I do think looking at the number of midfielders we've got, we've got what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holding midfielders. Yes, of course, Czech Decore is going to be out for the majority of the first half of the campaign. So that still leaves us with six. I definitely think I'm going to add Ozo to the loan list. We'll probably have to wait a few weeks until we can get him out. And there is still a chance that Will Hughes departs as well. So another deal going through there. I believe that's Shane Maxwell. And he's decided to go to Galatasaray for two years. Really impressed on his Premier League debut at the end of last season. So I'm hoping he can kick on. Oh, well, interestingly enough, Fulham have just come in for David Ozo on loan. Um, I think what I'm going to do is send him out on a one-year loan. I don't actually mind keeping him in the Premier League. I, I don't think he'd play much at Fulham. But of course, in career mode, it doesn't really matter whether they play or not. So I do quite like the idea of keeping him in England. And uh, there we see... Another Englishman heading out to Spain uh, rather than staying in England as Malcolm is going to go out on loan to Valencia for the upcoming season. Oh, and here come the bids flying in as well. Coventry City want to take Morgan Whitaker, trying to spend some of that money that we uh, we gave them for Hadji Wright and Milan as well. But, but I quite like Whitaker as a squad player, so I'm going to keep him here. And also a big bid for Abere Eze from Aston Villa. But if I was going to sell him, it would have to be to either a team in the Champions League or one of the traditional top six in England because I don't see him dropping to uh, Villa, who I believe aren't playing in any competition in Europe this season. There's another big bid for one of our key players, but Mark Gerhi, captain, has just signed a new deal with the club, so he's not going to be going anywhere. But getting a bit worried that we're starting to see big bids for our key players. There's interest in Calvin Bassey, which is fine. And now Union Berlin wants to take Hadji Wright, but again, as a third choice striker, he's absolutely superb, so I'm not letting him go anywhere. Well, there's confirmation of David Ozo heading out on loan to Fulham. Again, like I say, I quite like that one. Staying in um, in London as well uh, for 12 months as he will spend the upcoming season 
at Craven Cottage. It does feel like the squad has got significantly smaller since last season, but I think that's because we had the likes of Jeff Schlurp and Jordan Ayew, Klein and Ward, who never really played. So although the squad feels a lot smaller, I'm not sure it's necessarily impacting us too much as Adam Morton's ready to step back in. So, yeah, I mean, we, we've not really brought anyone in yet, um, and we've not really had any big bids for our key players, so I'm, I'm not really too sure what to do at the moment. I've got 140 million, and I don't know what to do with it. I wish that was the case in real life. Well, I'll tell you what I will do with some of that money. It's, uh, it's just past deadline day as I'm recording this. It's actually uh, Saturday evening. And Crystal Palace have signed Maxence Lacroix. Obviously, Joaquim Anderson has left. They've also brought in Trevor Chalaber on loan. And I've not used Maxence in, uh, in this year's game. And they reckon we can get him for close to that market valuation as he's gone there in real life, like we've done with Kamada and like we did with Elise when we sold him. I think I'm going to try and bring him in just for realism's sake. And we do probably need another centre back in the squad. Yeah, I mean, I, I love this guy. When I used to play Ultimate Team, he was always one of the players that you use in your starter squads because. He's not he's not massively highly overrated, but he's quick, he's strong, he's tall, and uh, Mad Max. He's moved on to Lille in the save, but I really like the idea of bringing him in as he has gone to Palace in real life. 23 and a half million, and uh, Max looks like he could be on his way to Selhurst Park. So Mad Max is in from Lille, as I say, uh, he's signed from Wolfsburg in real life. I think for around a similar fee of what we paid of 23 and a half million. He's not the flashiest of defenders, but we know he's got that absolutely rapid pace. And uh, that does now bring us up to, I think that's six centre-backs we've got. So we can effectively rotate which three are starting every week. So if we've got a Champions League game in midweek, we can completely change the uh, the back three, which I quite like the idea of with uh, Richards, Mengi and now Lacroix coming in as well. So yeah, Lacroix becomes our first, I'd say proper signing of the summer after Jorginho signed on a free. And for 23 and a half million, I think it's a great bit of business. I mentioned it earlier, the one position we've not really got any cover is down that left-hand side. We've got um, obviously Tyrick Mitchell, who's absolutely fantastic and he's our starter. But we've not really got a backup. I've got a few names on the list here. But I think the one that I really want to bring in is Rayan 8 Nori. I'm not sure if he's in the final year of his uh, contract at Wolves. Because the, uh, the, the price they think we can get him for is very, very low under market valuation. So he must be in his final year. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to lowball them too much here. But if he is in that final year of his contract, I'm going to go in with 22.5. And straight away, Gary O'Neill just says, yes, so 5 million under the market valuation. And Ike Nori, yeah, he is in the final year of his contract. Looks as if he could be heading to the capital to join up with Crystal Palace in the Champions League. So, Eight Nuri is in. I think he, he provides great cover and great competition for Tarek Mitchell. And he's probably a little bit more of an attacking threat. Well, he definitely is more of an attacking threat than Tarek Mitchell down that left-hand side. So, he offers us something slightly different as well. I'm going to get the defensive work rate up to high to get the defending stats up slightly. But I think that's a really good pickup, especially on such a cut price deal from Wolves. Oh, you are kidding me. Manchester City, you devils. Always trying to take my best players from me. Eberieze, wow, they want to offer me Fabio Moretti, which I, I don't really want. I don't really want an exchange player, but it looks as if Eberieze could be joining up with Michael Elise at the Etihad. I mean, if Man City ever come calling, you just cannot turn them down. It's just guaranteed trophies every season. And um, as I say, like Michael Elise. Looks as if he could be heading to join up with Pep Guardiola. That That is, I mean, it's gutting, but 65 million. We maybe could have got a little bit more for him, but to be honest, I don't really need the cash. I've got so much money, and um, with just a year, well, actually, I think it's two years left on his deal, 
it's no real surprise that there is a big suitor for a Bere Eze. It was a fantastic campaign for him last season. And I said, didn't I? I said that I thought there'd be big suitors and I was correct. Well, there it is. It didn't take him long to decide. Bereze is heading to Manchester City. I don't want to watch him get walked out the door. The bloody cutscene's the same every time. But, wow, big sale of Michael Elise last summer. And now Bereze this season heading to the Etihad. Yeah, we, we probably, well, maybe could have got a little bit more money. But I didn't want to see Pep Guardiola walk out of the door. So, Eze is gone. We're going to have to replace him. Um, I do have somebody lined up, and it seems that there's some interest in Eddie Nketiah, who's another who's just gone to Palace in real life. My plan was that if we had a bid for odds on Edward and he left the club, as he has gone to Leicester on loan in real life, then I would bring Eddie Nketiah in as my number two. I could still potentially do that and bring Eddie in and look to sell Edward, which I am quite tempted to do because... It does look like Edward's future at Palace is maybe under threat, the fact that they've loaned him out to Leicester. And Eddie Nketiah does have a little bit more experience, especially if we're looking at someone who can step in on those uh, Champions League nights. Looks as if he might be in the final year of his contract as well. He's a good finisher, Nketiah. You know what? I think I might actually approach Arsenal, see what kind of deal we can strike up with them. And then we might look to get rid of one of either Odson, Edward, or Hadji Wright. So I'm just going to go in with valuation. He has obviously moved to Palace in real life. And it's, <laughs> I say it's a realistic transfer. It's realistic because it has happened. But it's the kind of move you can see happening before it even does happen. Arsenal willing to part with Nketiah for just 18 and a half million. It does seem like quite a good deal. Um, in the final year of his contract. He's on a lot of money, so he will have to take a bit of a wage decrease if he wants to join. But Eddie Nketiah could be on his way to Crystal Palace. So Eddie Nketiah is in. It's a cut price deal of just 18 and a half million. And he did take quite a big wage cut down to 55 grand a week uh, as we gave him a big signing on bonus. And for realism's sake, it makes sense, especially as there was interest from other clubs. We do now have the dilemma of having four very decent strikers all around the same ability. And we do only play one up top. So I'm not sure what that means for Odson Edward and Hadji Wright. But I guess we'll wait and see what happens as we progress through the window. So our fourth signing of the summer is in, of course. We still need to replace a Bere Eze and wow. Now Arsenal coming in for Dean Henderson, of course. They finished in a Europa League spot last year. Uh, I mean, they've got Ramsdale. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we could sign Ramsdale as a replacement. It's an interesting shout, you know, to uh, to bring Aaron Ramsdale in as Dean Henderson goes the other way. But back-to-back -back, uh, Golden Glove winners with, uh, with Crystal Palace. I'm not really surprised that there's some interest in him. I'm going to stall it for now. And um, I think I'll wait and make a decision on, on Dean Henderson. We can get a lot of money for him. Well, as I'm just sending through here, another couple of big bids and Liverpool wanting Jefferson Lerma. Now, normally I would negotiate and let him go, but he's literally just signed a new contract at the beginning of the window. But as for this bid here for Dean Henderson, I do think I at least have to negotiate and say to Mikel Arteta, if, if you want him... He's a, a two-time back-to-back Golden Glove winner. If you want him, you're going to have to pay a premium. And Mikel Arteta says, I want him. He, he's going to be my new number one. So we could do a little switchy-switch with Aaron Ramsdale coming the other way. I'm not sure. I have used him before uh, in the Glory Hunter save uh, last year on FIFA. But it does kind of make sense to have him coming the other way in a little switchy switch and well there it is dean henderson is off to arsenal didn't take very long that one we've already lost two of our key components from last season Eze heading to manchester city and now dean henderson back-to-back -back golden glove winner 
heading to Arsenal for 37.5 million. But again, I couldn't really stand in his way. Yes, we're in the Champions League this year, as RB Leipzig want Dan Ballard, but one of the traditional top six come in. How often do you see the players make that move? They offer more money. There's also a much higher chance of longer term success. Yes, Crystal Palace might be in the Champions League this season, but um, it's likely that Arsenal will be back in the competition for many years to come. So, yeah, Dean Henderson gone. I think Aaron Ramsdale will probably be the man that I look to bring in. I'm going to hold fire for now because I want to play the Super Cup. But what I think I am going to do, um, because I've kind of forgotten to do it, is bring in my replacement for Ebere Eze, and that is this man, Mateus Cunha, another player at Wolves. Not sure if he's in the final year of his contract. Looks like with the uh, price they're saying there, maybe two years left on his deal. But I think as that sort of inside forward on the left, in the role that Ebere Eze was playing last year, I think that's actually where he's best rather than playing as an out-and-out -out number nine. With Eze departing to Manchester City, I really want to use this guy. I've not used him this year on FC24, and this is my chance. Mateus Cunha, I'm coming for you. Of course, we've just signed Aitnori from Wolves as well, and they did have a, a pretty poor season. Um, I'm going to go in a little bit over the valuation because I've got money to burn. So I'm going to say 35 million. And, well, Gary O'Neill, just like everyone else, wants Zach Hurst, but that is not going to happen. I'm going to go back in with my 35 million. And Gary O'Neill says, yes, we maybe could have got him for a couple of million pounds cheaper. But to be honest, the money's not really an issue for us at the moment. We are absolutely stacked. But Mateus Cunha is in from Wolves, and I know I say it about most players that I sign, but I'm such a big fan of this lad in real life. He's an absolute baller, and I mean a baller. Really excited to use him, because I've not used him this season. He and João Pedro, I really wanted to use right at the beginning of the game, and we use João Pedro in our Blades career mode, and now finally getting the chance to use Mateus Cunha as my replacement for Eze. Eze had a great goal scoring season last campaign, but I do think that Mateus Cunha potentially provides us with even more of a goal threat. So really excited to have him in. And he's likely to make his debut here in the Super Cup against last year's Champions League winners at Borussia Dortmund. So a couple of debuts for us here. Mateus Cunha starting and uh, in the number 10 role, we've got Eddie Nketiah who's taken the number 9 shirt. I quite like that up top. Uh, Zach Hurst also, I believe, making his debut for the team. And Ike Nori down this left-hand side as well. So quite a few debuts. Oh, and Mad Max at centre-back as well. So yeah, I've made quite a few changes because this game actually comes in midweek before our first league game. So more focused on that as I believe we take on Wolves on match day one. But um, yeah, still be nice to get our hands on the trophy if we can tonight. Well, back underway in the uh, in the second half here and it was a uh, pretty poor opening 45. Still waiting for any real chances of note as Cunha steps in from the left. That's good feet from the Brazilian. Cunha strike is deflected and Cabell should claim and does. Casemiro to Chan. Oh, nice turn and a big save by Freddie Woodman. A couple of subs for both teams there as the corner swung into the near post. The heart heads it away, but not very well. And Woodman has to make the save at the near post. Again, there's a broiler out to Milan. Dinked into Kamada and Cabell forced into his first save of the game. A couple of the subs linking up there, and it will be Kamara to swing the corner in deep. Looking for Nketia! Schlotterbeck lost the flight of the ball in the air. And Crystal Palace's new number nine, Eddie Nketia, gets his first of the season and his first for the club. Casemiro into Enziri. Strikes off oh, from range. And it's a brilliant strike as well. I thought that maybe Woodman should have got something on it, but the substitute straight away fires his side back level. Let's have a look from behind the goal. 
maybe Woodman should have got something on it. It is a good strike by the Moroccan. And uh, Dortmund fight back five minutes after going behind. Dortmund looking to win this late on. Casemiro drives the ball forward. And Nasiri, oh, it's a penalty. And Woodman made the stop as well. How many times do we see that, man? Trying to make the block. And I think I just need to try and drill into my brain not to slide. He does catch him. But Emre Chan with the chance to win it sends Woodman the wrong way. And Borussia Dortmund from behind will be lifting the UEFA Super Cup. Well, I'm not going to lose any sleep tonight after losing that. But it is a little bit disappointing to start the season off with a loss. Especially after we went a goal up with around 15 minutes to play. To lose it in normal time without even going to extra time or penalties is quite disappointing but it's the Dortmund captain Emre Chan who will lift the Super Cup for the Germans and it is a loss to start the season off for Crystal Palace. But I'll tell you what guys we will leave it there for today and uh, we'll come back in the next episode to kick off our Premier League campaign at home at Two Wolves. We'll close out the final couple of weeks of the summer transfer window and crack on into September but already a couple of big departures with Dean Henderson and Eze heading to domestic rivals. So Crystal Palace in a little bit of a rebuild stage. But guys, I'll catch you for the next episode very soon. You won't want to miss it as we will close out the summer transfer window with more signings to come. I'll catch you for it very soon and peace.